as you go in the future, you move towards a 4P model. We want prediction, prevention, personalize, and of course, the crucial thing is participate. So if you participate in your health, you do better. So again, peer-to-peer -peer meaning you participate, personalizes, it looks at your genome structure, prevent what do we do before you get sick. So this is kind of the emerging, what's called the 4P model. Now as this debate shifts, you have a new debate on, well, if you are designing the city, what's the role of green spaces? Now it used to be hippies, green people said, well, we need parks and trees. And actually now there's very good scientific evidence for that. The more time you spend in the forest, your immune system gets stronger. Cortisol levels drop. So thus, it's not just interesting to have parks in the city, it's actually healthier for everyone. Now why should you care? We all know health expenses will keep on going up in aging society. This reduces them. Healthier, happier citizens. Now, where's Geelong's role in that? The lecture I yesterday by Jeff, actually your forefathers, four mothers, four aunties, four uncles, they thought about this. I mean, this was stunning for me. They embedded in these botanical gardens, right? Was it 100 years ago? Does anyone remember? Anyone was around then? Yep. That's a joke, right? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay. Was, was any, so everyone remember this. So, so which year was this? Anyone? Okay. So this was actually someone thought through, let's create green space. Now, if you look at it today, that's kind of what it looks like. So this is thinking through the long-term future. I don't know if they knew the science. I don't think they had cortisol readings back then. But somehow they intuitively knew we need this. So this is powerful futures at work. Those two people on the left, they're everywhere in your city. Have you seen them? <laughs> I've walked about 5K this morning everywhere I went. I mean, first it's kind of scary. You know, like they're following you everywhere, right? Is that just me or all of it? And then after all, I get, this is interesting, and then it becomes almost like a Gaudi Barcelona type thing. Like this is kind of novel art. So I'm totally intrigued. It's not just green spaces when we talk about futures of health, it's green buildings. So again, whether or not you like buildings or not, if you make them green, basically your well-being increases and productivity increases. Of course, you can fake it. I did present to one city in this country, and yet at the end, the mayor said, why? Why do you want me to paint the buildings green? <laughs> we don't want you to paint the buildings green. We want you to design green buildings with sunlight, nature, flow of energy, smart buildings. Now, how do you make them smart? One with, the tr with sensors. The sensors pick up heating, energy waste, energy use, and eventually well-being and happiness. Smart, green, happy spaces. So that's kind of clever design when we think about the futures of health. The cutting edge stuff is what's called the emotional building. So that's what people are working. How do I measure people's well-being, emotions within a city? So Stockholm has started what's called the happiness index to measure where are people at every day of the week. So this is cutting edge, the science is weak, but it's starting to push through, here's how we're starting to shift. So this, this shifts in a way, I'm trying to give you a sense about, we think the future's stable, but just as I suggested, in terms of before smoking was healthy, to now it's about well-being and city mapping. So now let's take, I want to make sure within the confines of a theater style, we do some interaction. So if the argument I've suggested is true, a shift in health, think with your partner, what's one implication for Geelong if this argument is correct? So this do it in pairs, those of you in threes, it's fine. So you're thinking through if what I've suggested is true, what is the implication for Geelong? So this is just take 10 seconds, just trying to get you in the space of thinking it through, if this is true, what happens? If you don't like who you're sitting by, it's a good time to move. <laughs> so just 10 seconds, implication for Geelong, and we'll, we do have mics going back and forth.
Okay, let's come back. So anyone want to yell out if this shift in health from smoking as the norm to well-being, new technologies is occurring, what's one implication for the city as we go out 10, 15 years? I know you, you're kind of shy to yell out, but anyone want to yell out something? It's got a calming effect. Okay, so one thing it would make Geelong calming place because we have better technology, more green. Thank you. Anyone else? It's a group. What's that? Boring. Bring us back the meth, the meth and the smoking. Okay, fair enough. <laughs> Counterintuitive suggestion, but yeah, because everything's predicted, right? Because you, the sensors tell you what's going on. Okay, so boring. Third, any? What's that? Yeah, yeah. It should reduce exactly government spending on health because it's far more efficient. Okay, so her question is the implications is if you have a healthier community, what happens to old people? Really old people, not just Okay, so then that's fantastic. So the design is ensure that there's places where old people have spaces. For one thing project we've been working on with the elderly, I mean over 90, right? Yeah. 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 How do we ensure that we know the cause of death for over 90 people in New Zealand, 20% of them are from hospital falls. So when I work with hospital administrators, I ask them the simple question, hospital engineers, how do you design a hospital to ensure elderly people feel safe? I work with hundreds of hospitals, and this thing, well, we never thought about that. So exactly your question. You, you could design smart, soft floors that give you immediate information. So thank you. Four great, four great suggestions.